combine. And we'll give it another minute or two to see if anyone else joins us. Hi, Krista. Hi, Ann. Hi, Carol. Glenn, Nancy, Sherry, Barb, Terry, Carrie, miss you. Frankie from Canada is here. Awesome, beautiful. Hey, welcome. Okay, so we're gonna, I'm gonna give it a couple of minutes for people to jump on. Hi, Sue. And there's a couple of people joining me here in the studio space. So um, maybe one or two minutes and we'll get started. We're gonna do hips today. Thank you. We're so happy that you joined. Frankie and I just met in, in Iceland. Frankie's from Canada. And so I love that she's joining our community here. Hey. Great. I've heard it's nuts out there. Do we need any um, shades down for anyone? Do you like the sun? Okay. okay. Can you all hear me if you're online? We have 25 people online joining today, which is awesome. Karen, glad to have you here. I'll show, I always show our online friends, our studio. We have, we have four live, I love it. Everyone's like, hello. You know that they're all waving to you back at home. All right. I'm gonna go close this. All right, welcome here and online. Such a new world we're living in, right? So I pulled the, um, I've pulled the first two people who arrived, what they wanted to do. So we're doing hips today. Um, so those of you, I know there's a lot of people who aren't in Iowa City, Iowa. It's a uh, homecoming weekend. So the energy beyond our windows and walls is a little intense. And so we're gonna work on, you can't find parking, right? <laughs> we're gonna work on getting ourselves grounded. And the theme that I wanna work with today um, and I actually have been thinking about it a lot and I've had, I actually had a great conversation with a friend about this today is community and just the importance of community and connection and how what um, 
the pandemic did is it actually separated us. And yet, on the flip side, it also showed us how interconnected we all are, right? If anyone didn't believe that we were connected before, right? We see how connected all across this planet we are. So um, the beauty about community, and I would call it conscious community, that's what I'm talking about, because this is conscious community, is we have the potential to build each other up, right? Because growth and evolution, our own personal growth and evolution, even though it's a solitary effort, I mean, I've been on my own growth trajectory for about 20 years now, it's very solitary, right? And there have been many times I felt very alone in it. And yet, when you find energetic matches and connections of other people who also seek to be conscious and to seek awakening, right? Awakening to the truth of themselves, there's nothing, to me, there's nothing more powerful. So even though your own personal journey, your own evolution is your journey and it won't look like mine and it won't look like Zachary's, and it, it's, we need each other. <laughs> we need each other to hold space and to be, um, I just want all, you all to know online, there's like all this love going on in the studio right now. Like we need each other, right? Um, to, to actually have the courage and bravery to keep going. Because what I will also say, a, a teacher taught this, and I, you know, even though I love, I'm a scientist and I love statistics, um, the stat this teacher was a spiritual teacher taught is only about, you know, about 5% of the, the population is actually a, wanting to awaken. So it's a relatively small proportion of people who are interested in self transformation. There's a lot of people that just, they're not, they're, they're not there and it's okay. We all have our own life path. But if you are on the path of transformation, you need community, you need connection, you need like-minded souls who are like, keep going, keep going. So that's what we are going to connect with. I just, someone just asked a question and I want to soothe Catherine's heart. She said, this is my first time at the class. I can see, but cannot be seen. Correct. Yes. <laughs> you cannot be seen. I know that's always a little bit of a fear. It's like, oh no, I'm in my kitchen. And I, every, no, you can't be seen if you're watching at home. But what I will say after teaching on Zoom for a year and a half is you can be felt. So I, when I'm teaching, even though there's people in Canada, there's someone in California, I see their name. There's someone from Colorado. We're all interconnected when we practice together, even if it's in this sort of new way we're doing it. So today is to community and connection. So fingers, thumb to pointer finger, palms face down if you need more grounding. So maybe you are really feeling the energy of what's going on out there or palms face up if you feel really tired, if you're pretty fatigued after a week and you need some more energy. So I would even close your eyes and just feel both and see which one speaks to you the most. Then we'll take a deep breath in. So wherever you are practicing, breathing in and as you exhale, feel how the exhale can draw you inward and down. So stay with your breath, letting the exhale start to help you journey in. So the path of evolution is a journey in. Iyengar, a very well-known yogi says, the path of evolution is the path of involution. Meaning we have to go in to evolve. That's what we're gonna do today. So stay with your breath and no matter where you are, even if you're online, we're gonna do a collective sigh together. So whatever air is in the lungs, breathe it out now. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, big ha, big ah. Let some things go. I'm gonna do it again, breathe in. Ah. Do one more. Ah. 
And now let yourself land in your body, on your yoga mat, no matter where you're practicing. And notice where in your body your attention gets most pulled. Like, are you pulled towards your hands or your feet or your heart or your neck? Just observe, where is the sensation most prevalent? And can I stay there for a moment and observe it? And release the mudra you're holding with your hands and bring your palms together now so your palms touch in front of the heart. We call this Anjali Mudra. Thumbs rest gently on the sternum. Feel your pelvis descend down towards the earth and feel your spine extend up towards the sky. So in a moment, we're going to chant the sound of Om. And I know on Zoom, my chant doesn't kind of breaks up sound wise. But wherever you're chanting, chant with your full self, like let it come out. Because this act of chanting calms our nervous system, it calms our amygdala, and it opens us to connection. Energetically, we start to connect. So let's take a deep breath in together. And once again, follow the breath out. So allow yourself to fully release all the air in the lungs. We'll breathe in. Take another deep breath in. As you exhale, bow towards your hands and once again, feel your awareness drop down into your pelvis. And then release the hands to the tops of the thighs. Allow the head to gently lift and the eyes to blink open. And then from here, we'll start on all fours. So you can transition your way to all fours. Now, as you arrive on all fours, I start most of my classes with something called nonlinear movement. So there's no yoga pose, it's just moving. And there's something about staying on all fours that is an interesting, um, interesting experiment. So, but the key here is to let your eyes close and just let your body move. So the movements might start really slow um, or you might feel like, no, I'm ready for some big movements. I have some things to release and work out. There's no right, there's no wrong, there's no expectation. And not even I am going to watch you because I'm going to be doing my own movements in my yoga mat. So this first exploration is really to help you begin to feel like what am I feeling in my body why am I stiff where am I holding where do I feel really free you, you know it's Friday afternoon you might feel really relieved and free Just a reminder in this next hour, this actually sacred hour on your yoga mat that there's no one you have to take care of. There's nothing you have to figure out. There's really nothing ever to accomplish in yoga. 
It's simply a space for you to feel and to be present with whatever surfaces. Again, the power of just being present with yourself in community is quite powerful. So the region of the body we're working in today is the hips. It's actually the area in the body where we hold anxiety and fear and guilt. We're gonna clear some of that out. So as you continue just to work in this nonlinear way, add some movements of the hips, which could look like circles or figure eights, or maybe it's just moving your hips from side to side a bit. So getting out of judgment mode, moving more into just like neutral observation mode. All yoga poses are built from the base up. So it's really beautiful. We're starting in the base, opening the base. Now let this movement of the hips begin to sort of flow up the spine as you move through some cat cow. So you might feel your pelvis tilt and your heart lift. And as you exhale, the pelvis draws under and the spine rounds. All the while keeping your eyes closed just as a signal to your brain to keep attention and awareness inside. And then let's try out a down dog. So hands walk forward, toes curl under. And let yourself move. So again, allow there to be some fluid exploration of your dog. You might even drop your heels from side to side or walk it out a bit. And then when you feel ready, knees drop down to the mat, knees go quite wide, big toes touch, hips to heels, child's pose. Connect to your breath. And slow the exhale down. So end of week, we, you know, we're all still often in go mode. And you consciously get the exhale to slow down. And maybe begin to listen to your breath. So create the ha sound, that ujjayi sounding breath. It's like a fogging, like you're fogging up a mirror with your breath. So you're starting to hear it. Your face so close to the mat. You really start to feel the vibration and the sound of your breath.
So follow this next exhale. And the exhale brings us down. So follow the exhale down into the pelvis. You might feel your heels and your hips come closer together on this exhale. Now, when your next inhale comes, the inhale is sort of the force that draws you back up to all fours, back up to down dog. Inhaling the right leg into the sky. Bend the right knee and start to push your right foot over to the left. So that right knee lifts a little higher, that's it. And the pelvis starts to open towards the sky. And then roll your ankle a couple times, flex and point your foot. Begin to round up like a cat. So navel pulls towards spine, bring your right knee in towards your nose and hover. So pause here in a round up position. And then eventually the right foot steps between the hands, deep lunge. You can certainly use your hand to get your foot up towards the front of the mat. We pause in a deep lunge just to really land our awareness in the form of this pose. So back heel is rooted, spine is elongating, and you can certainly have blocks under the hands. I actually really like blocks under the hands in lunge if that feels good to you. Breathe in. Now, as you exhale, slowly lower the back knee down to the mat and bring your right foot over to the right edge of your mat and turn your toes out. So externally rotate. From here, you can come down onto your forearms if that feels available to your body. I like to actually stay upright just because it affords me more movement. But allow your pelvis to move. So it might just be moving side to side a bit or front to back. So yoga is a practice of clearing away. It's not, a, we don't add anything new, which is always my brain, it took my brain a long time to accept that. Like yoga isn't creating a better person out of you because it's adding something new. It's actually subtracting away all the stuff that is in us. So we settle into our truer essence. But we collect a lot of crap in our hips, right? A lot of stress, a lot of tension, a lot of sugar, right? It gets stored in our hips, which is why when I asked the start of this class today, what do you guys want? What was the first thing I heard? Hip openers. I hear this all the time because we're so congested in the pelvis and the hips. So we want to add more flow and movement here. And I'm watching my beautiful students, which is so helpful as a teacher to actually see what people are doing. So those of you at home, you might be doing it as well, but walk your right foot back towards the middle of your mat and then scoot your back knee just a couple inches back so you can straighten this front leg. You guys are already doing this, yes? We call this Ardha Hanumanasana. And blocks under the hands here might be really helpful, especially if hamstring is tight. So the first thing I wanna bring your attention to is your right heel, like really anchor it into the earth and then think about dragging your right heel back. So it's only gonna move like half an inch because you're on a sticky mat, but as soon as you drag your heel back, you feel the reverberation up to the hamstring attachment, which is right under, yes. Thank you, live people actually respond. <laughs> you're like, yes, I feel this right underneath that right buttock. And then spread your toes on the right foot a little bit more and keep, working on actively dragging your right heel back. But what we have to work on as we drag right heel back is that we're extending our heart, our torso forward and then you really feel it. I rock a little bit here just cause that flow movement helps or really wanna feel some good stuff. Walk your hands to the right and add a bit of a twist. Whew. I always feel slightly nauseated here, which I take as a good sign because it's like, oh yeah, getting into some of that stored stuff. So now let's add on our breath because the breath softens everything. Breathe in, exhale, ha, let it go. Yeah, there you go. Keep dragging the heel back, breathe in again. 
and then slowly come back to center. Bend into your right knee, lift your back knee, back in a deep lunge. Step back to down dog. And the first thing I want you to observe in down dog is, oh yeah, that right leg suddenly feels different than my left leg. You might walk it out, you can bounce your, bounce your pelvis up and down a little bit. All right, inhale left leg into the sky. Bend the left knee, press that left foot over towards the right and spread the toes of the left foot. So that activates your shin. Feel your left knee lift just a little higher. And then as you exhale, round up like a cat, draw left knee to nose, round, hover here. Shoulders will be over your wrist. And then step the left foot through deep lunge. Slowly lower the back knee down to the mat, walk the left foot off to the left and turn your toes out. And then again, begin to explore some movement here. You could be on your forearms, you could stay upright. Part of what I do as a teacher is sometimes create a template or a map for where we're going. And so I think it's essential for me to let you know that as we open hips, so this is both inner thighs, outer thighs, quads, hamstrings, that what sometimes people bump into is irritability and angstiness and annoyance and anger. And so just, just know that that could arise for you. And if and when it does, be there for it. You don't need to change it or fix it. All right, working our way into Ardha Hanumanasana. So this is the left foot walking back towards the center of the mat, back knee lifts, back knee scoots back, front leg, that left leg straightens. Left heel presses into the mat and drags back. You start to feel, oh yeah, I feel that on the back of my hamstring. But it's interesting as you're dragging the heel back, you have to really work to extend your spine long and your heart forward. So as you're pulling heel back, your torso is moving in the opposite direction. It's shining forward. You might also add that little twist by walking your hands to the left. You can have a block underneath your hands as well. Keep pressing the heel down, dragging it back. But now we're twisting our right waistline towards the left. Two breaths here to soften into it. So when we find the intense gnarly places in the body, we have to add that soft breath. Like, okay, I'm here, but I got this. I can learn to soften and be with all the intensity. All right, come back to center, bend into the left knee, lift the back knee, and step your back foot forward, Uttanasana. So we're in a forward fold. Make sure your head shakes out a little bit that you're releasing through your neck, yeah. Release through those shoulders, release through your lips. Let your jawline move side to side. And then feel the firmness of your feet connected to the earth, that you're really in your foundation. You're really solid in your feet. Bend your knees and sweep arms out to the side as you come all the way up to standing. Hands come down in front of the heart. And so release the hands. So thumb comes over the middle finger. This is called the mudra of transformation. So I think that when we're in conscious community, we're encouraging people to transform. And we're saying it's okay to transform. Because there's a lot of people in our lives that they don't like it when we change, <laughs> right? 
So conscious community is like, yes, I want you to change, keep growing, keep expanding, keep shining your light a little bit brighter. So this is the mudra of transformation. So if you don't want to transform, don't hold the mudra. <laughs> All right, palms come back down to the side of the body. All right, firm legs, toes are spread. Mudras are very subtle shifts of energy. This particular mudra actually begins to open the collarbones and the throat. So I think when we start to transform, part of our work is to bring it out into the world, to express it, to speak it, to play it, to paint it, um, to show it. As you continue to hold this mudra, feel your sternum lift a little bit, but your collarbones relax down, your neck nice and long like a giraffe and your chin just slightly draws back. So you get a little more softness at the back of the neck. So inhale, sweep the arms out to the sides all the way up. So maintain the mudra. And as you exhale and fold forward again, maintain the mudra. But as you eventually come all the, all the way down, mudra releases, fingers touch down to the earth. Again, shake out your head. Now, as you inhale, look forward halfway. So it's like a halfway lift, nice flat back fingers, slide up your shins. And then exhale, fold back into the forward fold. We'll do that again. Inhale with some breath. Exhale, now open your mouth, nice big ha sound as you fold. Last time we inhale, lengthen, get that spine as long as you can. And then exhale, follow the breath out. Hear the breath, really good size here in the studio. Step back to down dog. I didn't realize how much I missed hearing people breathe until people started to come back live. It's like, oh, I love the sound of collective size, right? For me, it makes me remember like I'm not alone. Sometimes we get alone in our suffering and then when we're in a yoga class and someone sighs next to us the whole time, we're like, oh wait, someone else is struggling too. Not even struggling, just in their own challenge. All right, inhale forward to plank. And we pause as we hold plank for a moment. And then exhale, hips move up and back to dog. Again, inhale forward to plank. Strong core here, and then exhale back, hips up and back to dog. Last time, forward to plank. Fingers are spread nice and wide. Again, shoulders are over the wrist or maybe just a little forward of the wrist. Draw that navel up. Keep your head in alignment with your spine. Feel the body start to shake and quiver. Breathe in as you exhale, lower down. Knees could come down first. Nice slow descent. As you arrive on your abdomen, make sure your feet go as wide as they need to for your low back. Take your hands off the mat and rise up. So funky cobra, I call this. Your hands are tinted and you can move a little more side to side, twist, shake things out. Close the eyes. So once again, you lose your own self-consciousness about what this looks like and just Feel your body move. And what could you let go of in this class today? We all got something. And the cool thing about yoga, which is so different than the other, my other profession, is you don't have to be conscious of what you're letting go. You just do the practice and it creates space. It helps you release. You don't have to know what you're releasing. You might, but you don't have to. Breathe in, lift a little higher. And then exhale, follow the breath out. Slide your hands in alignment with your chest. Come back up through down dog. Inhale, right leg into the sky. Bend the right knee. Open up again, that right foot pressing over to the left. Now think about your left femur rooting back a little deeper. Pull your navel in towards the spine so you connect to the core. As you exhale, once again, round, hover, knee to nose. We're gonna stretch the right leg up again, back behind you, straight back. Now take your right knee to your right elbow and hover. Stretch it back again. Take it across your body, right knee to left elbow, hover. 
straighten all the way back. All right, this time, right foot between the hands, deep lunge. Make sure your right knee is over your right ankle and I suggest you walk your right foot off to the right just a little bit because we're lifting up to a high lunge. As you lift to a high lunge, first thing is hands to pelvis. So we wanna get rooted, stable, shoulders back. Create the mudra. Mudra, I'm open to transformation. Thumb over, middle finger. Inhale, arms up. You can either do mudra forward or your fingers can turn into one another. See what feels best on your shoulders. Breathe in, follow the exhale down. So we're getting down into our hips and our pelvis. Again, inhale, I love this because the inhale reminds us, stay light, stay light, you got this. And then the exhale, yeah, we get deeper. It's like I'm more grounded. Do that again, breathing in. This time on the exhale, release mudra. Hands come to the earth, pause. Step back, down dog. Walk it out a little bit. If you need a child's pose, take a child's pose. Otherwise, stay here with me for a couple more breaths. Inhale, left leg into the sky. Open pelvis towards the ceiling. So left foot presses over to the right as you root your right femur back. Tune into your core. You want strong core here for where we're going. Straighten that left leg, left knee to nose, round up. As you inhale, straighten the left leg back. As you exhale, left knee to left elbow. Inhale, leg straightens back. Now this time you take it across the body. So it's a little twist, left knee to right elbow. Straighten back. Step left foot through, deep lunge. Left foot walks over to the left. So you've got a nice broad stance. Come all the way upright. Start with a rooted pelvis. If you feel a little unsteady, gaze should be down towards the earth. Roll the shoulders back, thumb over middle finger. Palms rise up. Now connect with the rhythm, the timing of your breath. Inhale is always gonna lift and expand your torso. Exhale sinks you deeper into your front thigh. Steady gaze, so let your gaze steady at one point. So instead of your eyes flitting around the room, make sure that you're grounded with your gaze at one point. Breathe in again. And now exhale, release. Step forward. Uttanasana. Shake out the head. Soften your jawline. Bend your knees, sweep your arms out to the side, come all the way up. Hands to heart. Head thumb over middle finger. Palms face forward. Sternum lifts, collarbones relax, long neck, chin draws back. Eyes are closed or gaze is steadfast and soft. So soft gaze at one point. So staying here, very conscious, very aware, your weight starts to transfer mostly into your left foot. So you just feel all the weight begin to come into your left foot. Lift your right foot up, release your mudra on your right hand and reach for the top of your right foot. But maintain the mudra on the left side. Hug inner knees in and then really anchor your tailbone down towards the floor. Feel that navel draw in and up and then maybe see about opposite arm coming forward. Keep hugging in. Keep lengthening up. 
Gaze point towards the floor is probably gonna give you the most balance. If you want more challenge, you'll lift your gaze to horizon level or all the way up towards the sky. Breathe in again and then exhale, release. Shake it out. I always tell people, if you don't wanna change, don't do yoga, right? <laughs> and it's subtle changes. It's subtle things, but it all adds up. All right, weight is now coming into your left, your right foot. Yeah. And we're lifting the left foot up. Hug in, root down through your pelvis, thumb over the middle finger of your right hand. Extend that right arm up. So it's as if your inner knees and inner thighs are like magnetically drawn towards one another. Keep anchoring your tailbone down, but keep lengthening from your waist to your armpits to your crown. You guys are way more balanced on this side. You feel your steadfastness. Breathe in. Stay, stay here in your solid foundation. Breathe in again. And then exhale, release. Shake it out again. Find a block, make sure the block is right up the front edge of your mat. And you're standing behind the block. So you're at the front edge of the mat, but you've got a block in front of you. All right, weight coming into the right foot. We're doing that again, lift the left foot up. Reach for the top of the left foot, standing because we're gonna add some things to it though. Middle finger, thumb on the right hand, come together, expand up. I'm open to transformation. I'm open and ready. I feel supported by community and connection. I'm ready for transformation. Inner thighs hug in, navel draws in, you lengthen up. Now maintain the mudra for a moment as you release your left foot. Now hands come together in front of the heart as we extend back into warrior three. Now your block is here because you might drop your hands to the block if that feels better. Otherwise hands stay right in front of the heart. Breathe in, bending into your right knee, step your left foot back. High lunge, mudra, thumb over middle finger. Breathe in. Now this time as we exhale, we're gonna bend the elbows, pull the elbows back. Inhale, it's actually straight in the front leg. Exhale, bend into the front knee, pull elbows back. Two more times, we're gonna add breath. Exhale, big ha, stick your tongue out. <sighs> Lion's breath. One more. Stick that tongue out. We got some good, we got, we got some releases going on in here. I can feel it, hands to the earth. All right, pause and then step back into down dog. So I invite you and down dog to kind of move around, listen to your body again. If you're needing a child's pose, don't ever hesitate, take a child's pose. Uh, you can stay with me here in down dog or do a vinyasa and I'll talk through a vinyasa. So as you inhale, you'll come forward to plank. Exhale back to dog. Doing that two more times. If you're in child's pose, please stay. Enjoy the process, breathe. And your third pass forward, lower down. Taking a cobra or an up dog, your choice. Eventually, we all meet back in down dog. And then from down dog, make your way to the front of the mat, which means you could jump. You could bend your knees and jump forward. You could walk forward. You figure out what works for you, but we all meet up in the forward fold. Again, that head releasing. Little slight bend in the knees. Inhale, sweep arms forward, come all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart. Holy cow, it's hot in here. Does anyone else feel like it's really hot in here? It's not even hot, it's like 70 degrees. I must just be, oh, it's good. We burn through things when we're hot. All right, shake it out a little bit. We're back at the front of the mat. We have another side to go. 
All right, so weight this time is coming into our left foot, right foot lifts up. We hug in. Tailbone roots, spine lengthens, thumb over middle finger, stretch that arm up. Steady gaze. Now, before we transition, I want you to really notice the sensation of your navel pulling towards your core. So you're connected right here. From that, you release the foot, hands come together in front of the heart, warrior three. But keep pulling that navel up towards your spine. That's giving you that stability. Toes of your right foot are spread. Now bend into your left knee, tap your right foot back. High lunge, thumbs over the middle fingers, inhale up. Exhale, just get yourself situated, settle in here. Now inhale again, this time as you exhale, bend the elbows, pull the elbows back, shoulder blades come together. Inhale, this time straighten your front leg. We're adding more, exhale, elbows bend. Two more times, lion's breath, inhale. All right, what do you wanna let go of? Breathe it out, big ha. Stick that tongue out, yeah, one more time. Exhale. Beautiful, hands to the earth. Get back to down dog. And from here, come into a child's pose. So knees come down to the mat. Knees are wide, hips back towards heels. Let's take a moment to check in and feel. The rest is as essential as the effort. So nothing to figure out again, just taking a moment to feel. If you're not hearing your breath, listen for it now. So creating that ha sound in the back of the throat. And staying committed to your own inner opening, knowing that there's about 30 of us doing it together. Uh, there's actually about 35 of us doing it together. You tap into the connection that there are other people also committed to letting go, opening themselves up. So on this next inhale, come back up to all fours, back up to down dog. Inhale, left leg into the sky. Bend the left knee, open. Left foot pushing over to the right, right thigh, pressing back. Straighten left leg, step left foot through the hands. Now we turn the back foot down and come upright. So as you come upright, legs straighten. So both legs are straight, but use this moment to look at your feet and make sure that your left heel intersects your right arch. So you've got nice heel to arch alignment. You might like, we're moving into trikonasana, which is triangle pose. You might like a block. I always have hand on chin, but if you, if you already know, I like triangle with a block, grab one of those. All right, so we start by just firming the legs, creating our mudra, because we can do it in trikonasana. I'm open to transformation. Arms up, turn palms towards the sky. Look out over your front hand, breathe in. And as you exhale, bow over to the left. And then we'll inhale, rise back up. So we'll move in and out a couple times. 
Exhale, legs are straight, bowing over to the left. Inhale, rise back up. Last time, now we stay. Release your mudra on your left hand and place your hand on your shin, but you can maintain mudra on that top hand. Firm, really firm the legs. So feel your kneecaps lift and a little more pressure of your right foot pressing into the earth. Now, triangle has a little twist. So lengthen through your spine first. Now feel that navel start to spin up to the right just a bit. You might even feel your gaze spin up towards your top hand. Pull navel in towards spine and that also anchors your tailbone down. Inhale, now as you exhale, release the mudra on the right hand, right hand comes to the waist. Bend into your left knee and pivot your back heel. So left hand ideally is gonna come to a black now. That's when you like your black. So left hand, there you go. And we'll step our back foot one step forward. So shorten your stance, bring your hand on a block, your left hand on a block or just on the floor as we lift right leg into half moon. Yeah, so left hand needs to come forward of your left foot and way off to the left. So move your hand in your black way off to the left. It'll make you so much more stable. Yes, that's it. Notice how much more stable you got there. Spread the toes of your right foot. Feel your navel draw and pull your right shoulder back. Maybe top hand lifts and you might even add the mudra on the top hand. Oh my goodness, so much to think about. And now we emergency exit by bringing our right, hand, our right foot next to our left foot. Shake out your head. Strong work. Let's inhale, look up halfway. And on the exhale, stick the tongue out, big ha. As you release. Knees bend, arms sweep out to the side, come all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart. Let's take a moment to feel. Release the hands. That was fun, wasn't it? Let's do it again. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, forward. Inhale, look up halfway. That heart extends forward. As you exhale, open the mouth, big sigh, big release, big sound. Step back to down dog. Inhale, right leg into the sky. Right knee bends, we press right foot over to the left. Both hands are pressing down and forward. Now inhale, straighten right leg, step the right foot between the hands. Turn the back foot down, rise up. And as you rise up, make sure that you've got a good stance. So right heel intersects left arch, but that you're wide enough. Legs firm, thumbs over middle finger, arms up, shoulder height, palms turn towards the sky. Look out over that front hand, breathe in. Exhale, bow to the right. Keep those legs so straight and steadfast, so strong, kneecaps are lifting. Inhale, rise back up. Very good, exhale. It's a very fluid, flowing movement. Doing it again, inhale, rise up. Exhale, we stay. So right hand releases mudra as you press right hand into shin or into ankle. Top hand still maintains mudra. From the legs, little twist. So it's as if your right waist is moving up to the left. Left shoulder pulls back, gaze might even lift towards your left fingers. And then feel that connection of navel pulling in towards your spine. Inhale, release mudra on the left hand. Left hand comes to the waist, bend into your right knee. Step your back foot one step forward. Right hand comes to a block or the floor, left leg lifts up, half moon. Glutes are so firm back there. So really firm glutes, draw the left shoulder back, root your right femur back, feel that little twist. You might even add mudra on the top hand. Yes, so beautiful everyone. Be conscious of how you release it just by dropping that left foot next to the right foot. Ah, shake it out. Yes. Thank you for whoever sighed. It always does my heart good to hear, feel people, hear people sigh. It means I'm doing my job. 
Just like when people cry, I'm always like, yes, I'm doing my job. Yes, they're letting go. I'm like the only person I know that's like, yes, I made someone cry. All right, bend the knees, sweep the arms, come all the way up. Hands down in front of the heart. All right, releasing the hands. Why don't all of you face the big windows and just take a wide stance? So just go wide with your feet. We're moving into Prasarta Padatanasana, so wide legged forward fold. So look at your feet. There's a little turning in of the toes, there's a little internal rotation here. And you can go maybe a little wider with your feet than you normally would. Start with your hands on your pelvis and root the pelvis down, but use the rooting of the pelvis down as sort of like a visceral reminder to get long in your spine. So as your pelvis roots, your spine grows longer, shoulders draw back, sternum lifts, collarbones lift, breathe in. Exhale, take your time hinging forward. And as you come all the way forward, hands come down to the earth or to blocks and head releases. So for some of you, your head might be really close to the mat, crown of the head. You could even put a block under the head if you want something to feel the pressure of pressing into. But shake, again, shake out the head, feel, um, this is an inversion. So inversions are great at allowing sort of the stress to kind of roll off the spine, roll off the head, roll off the neck. Take a moment to just reconsider your legs and could you firm up your legs a little bit more? So what I mean is just really feel your muscles hugging to the bone that creates a sense of safety for us to actually let some things go. We move those thigh bones back a little more weight in the heels and the weight is also rolling a little more towards the inner edges of the feet. And then this is for sure a bonus here. You don't necessarily have to do this, but if you wanna feel a little more, bring your hands to the outsides of your shins. And it's as if you're pressing your shins in towards one another as you're trying to broaden your upper inner thighs apart. So big sensation here, shins press in as you're trying to broaden upper inner thighs apart. And then draw navel up into the body. So feel the navel, the belly pull in. Really good. You can release hands back to the earth. And spend three more breaths here, exploring how it feels to let go and release. All right, staying in this forward fold. Now inhale and look up halfway. So walk your hands forward just a little bit, lengthen through your spine and maintain that beautiful length through your spine as you now walk your hands towards your front foot, your left foot, so you're pivoting forward into a deep lunge. Step back to down dog. Inhale, right leg into the sky. As you exhale, draw right knee forward into pigeon pose. Eka, pada, raja, kapatasana. So right knee is all the way out to the edge of the mat. And start upright. And you might even um, get a blocks under your hands if you like. The upright, sometimes you call it proud pigeon allows you to really lengthen, shoulders back, lifted heart. You could even curl through your upper back a bit. Breathe in and now exhale, keep length in your spine as you fold forward, coming onto your forearms. Turn the palms towards the sky and place your thumb over your middle finger. So we're back in our mudra, which is just essentially saying to your soul, your nervous system, I am open to transformation. 
So clearly don't hold it if it doesn't feel authentic to you. And then in pigeon pose, could you just add a little bit of movement here? It could be super subtle. It might just be a little swaying of your hips left to right. You might even open your mouth and create that sigh, especially if you're like, yeah, I got some built up stuff to let go. And just clearing some space, carving out some space in the body. Finding some more freedom internally. Two more breaths, follow the exhale. Exhale brings you down into the pelvis. From here, in your own sweet time, release the mudra, place the hands. Lift back through down dog or through all fours, you decide, or even chest. Sometimes people like to go directly into a child's pose. I found that everyone has their own little um, ritual after pigeon pose that they need to go through to release that side. And I encourage you to feel that side. You did a big opening on the right side. So can you actually feel that? Second side, left leg up into the sky. As you exhale, left knee comes way off to the edge of the mat. So we want that knee to be really quite wide. Start upright. Just kind of like ensures an honest spine, a long spine, maybe even lifting through the sternum a bit. I really like this with the wall behind me to press into. Sorry, you don't all have one of those. Maybe you do if you're at home, I don't know. And come forward onto all, to the forearms. If you wanna add our, I'm open to transformation mudra, thumb over middle finger. And then just feel yourself drop in. This is the point in the practice where you've actually cultivated already a pretty good uh, portal in to yourself and to your body. So drop in and feel. Two more breaths here. Now you can release this pose by again coming out the way you did last time, or we are gonna move on to our seat. So you might just roll to the outside of the left hip and swing your right leg around. Start here in Dandasana, so staff pose, legs are straight out in front of you. And if you have a little blanket to sit on, get a little bit of elevation under your seat. Legs are straight. Uh, internally rotate, so pull, um, sort of rotate inner thigh down as you pull flesh away from your sit bone. 
bend the left knee and draw the left foot in and then step the left foot over the straight right leg. Moving into a seated twist. So you could also um, you know, swing your right heel around towards your left hip if you like, that feels good to you. It never quite feels right to me, but for some people you like the more of the containment of it. Interlace fingers, pull shin in, root down through the, excuse me, pelvis, but then lengthen up. Uh, right arm out to the side. Wrap right arm around the leg as you twist to the left. You could also hook elbow. Some people prefer the elbow hook. But let yourself land in this, you know, twist are designed to kind of ring, ring us out, ring out the stress, ring out the old, make way for the new. So use your inhale to lengthen through your spine. Use your exhale to twist to the left just a little bit more. So it's like you're pulling your navel to the left, letting your heart twist to the left. Two more breaths here and hear your exhale. So let that exhale twist you deeper, ring a little more out. And then you slowly come back to center. Straighten the left leg. Bounce the knees. Second side, right knee bends. Right foot steps over the left leg. If on the other side you bent your left leg, do so on this side as well. Interlace fingers, pull in on the right leg and then lengthen up. Left arm out to the side. Begin to twist as you wrap the arm around the leg, twisting to the right. Just get yourself settled first in this pose. It's often, we often actually feel a little resistant to twist because it's not natural for one half of our body to be moving in the opposite direction from the other half. So notice if you feel a little resistant, but have the courage on this next exhale to twist it out, move a little deeper. Like, what do you need to wring out of your system? What's not working anymore? And it's at the bottom of the breath that you can really twist deeper. So stay for one more breath, hold the breath out and go even deeper into that twist. And then when you're ready to release, coming all the way out, straighten the right leg. If you're on a blanket, come off the blanket. We'll come down together with a lot of awareness. So heels are right up at the front edge of the mat. Arms up, we can add our mudra here, thumb over middle finger. Lengthen up, tuck chin, round through upper back and take your time coming down. So really slow, conscious, engaged, strong body as you descend. And bring your knees in towards your chest and rock a little side to side. From here, you might even grab for the little toe sides of the feet for happy baby. So holding on to the edges of the feet. Hopefully your hips are more open now. Rock side to side. And then from here, release feet down to the floor. So knees will be bent, feet flat on the floor. 
And then feet go wide. So the knees are bent, feet go wide to the edges of the mat. Breathe in, and then as you exhale, drop knees down to the right. So windshield wiper, knees drop down to the right. Pause here with knees down to the right and think about tucking your left hip under just a bit more. And then extend your left arm up overhead. Stay here for three breaths. Just notice each exhale draws you a little deeper. Keep moving your awareness in. Nice slow transition on an inhale, knees come back to center. And they drop down to the left. So now it'll be your right arm that extends up overhead. And you're, you're sort of thinking about, could I get my right hip or my right buttock tucked under just a little bit more? It's like you're trying to grow your right femur longer. You're getting really into that right hip flexor. And now back to center. Now soles of the feet come together, knees open out to the side, Supta Baddha Konasana. Hands rest on the abdomen, arms are out at the side, palms face up. This pose, butterfly pose, is not only simultaneously opening your pelvis, your hips, but this pose also opens the throat, the chest. So again, here is our ability to express ourselves in the world, in our relationships, in our community. Take two more breaths in Supta Baddha. Again, really slowing down the exhale, savoring. Each pose has like its own energetic imprint and like really savoring the imprint of this pose. And then whenever you're ready, begin your transition into Shavasana. And if you have extra props or blankets or clothing or socks, just an extra moment to put them on. And for our friends at home, this it's so easy not to do Shavasana. I encourage you to hang with us for three more minutes, four more minutes. This is the most important pose of the practice because this is when integration happens. You just moved a ton of energy in your body. You opened and created a bunch of space. And so now you wanna let the body like integrate and let that really land and soak in. So I'm gonna be quiet and just give you and your body space to settle into this newfound body mind that you're resting in.
So breathe in and breathe out, feeling your awareness lift up to the surface a bit more. Bring a little bit of movement into your fingers and your toes to start to transition back to a more wakeful state. You might take a big stretch. As you're transitioning, take your time. And you'll come back to your seat. There's no hurry. So as you're transitioning, I want you to um, contemplate community that you're in and how we all need it. We all need connection. We all need soulful friends, people we can be real with. And if someone pops to mind as you're cultivating, you're thinking about who are those people, I can encourage you to send them a text, reach out, let them know you care. And as you come all the way up, we'll sit together one last moment in this community of people all in, all around, all around Iowa, around the country, even all the way up into Canada. Let's take a big breath in and as you exhale, bow towards your heart. So you're essentially bowing towards your light. Namaste. And as for, for my friends here in the studio and for my friends at home or at, online, share namaste with other people. So in the space, turn to the people who've been here and share namaste. That's what we do in community. And I share it all with you who are at home. So. We do better because we have each other, right? We encourage each other. So namaste. That's such a good weekend. Good evening. By the way, if you are interested in conscious community, I have a nine-week program starting on Wednesday, and it's all really about supporting each other. The idea is we all know what we should be doing to feel better, but we don't do it. It's just, it's like, a, it's, it's, a, it's true that, right? Like, we all know we should be moving and meditating and breathing and connecting with people who build us up, and we don't do it. It's called the GI Joe fallacy. The GI Joe used to be like, if you know it, knowing is the first step. It's actually not. Like we can know exactly what we need to do and we don't do it. So when you're in connection and community and collaboration with other people, it's because Zachary is meditating that I'm like, oh, I'm gonna get up and meditate because I've got some, you know, I've got that connection. So if, if you're needing that right now, it's all online so you can join, but it starts on Wednesday. So, and I'm here tomorrow morning for a free yoga class as well. So um, join me tomorrow morning as well. All right, all you friends at online, love to all of you as well. Namaste, namaste. Catherine, your first time in this class. I hope it was a good one if you're still on. Katie, nice to see your name on here. Olga, good to see you on here. Sue, as always, missing you. Teresa, nice to have you. Sandra, your first time too. Yay, come back and see us again. I love that new people are joining. So we can even build community online. It's kind of amazing. Catherine, I'm so glad you're gonna do my class. I look forward to having you in it. Nancy feels amazing. Yay, I feel pretty amazing too. Yay, Kimberly and Teresa. <laughs> love that you guys were all here. Frankie, oh, I'm so happy that you were here. Um, I'm gonna try to avoid homecoming in this town. It's, we have like, I don't know, 70,000 people that come in. So I'm gonna try to stay away from it, but I think a lot of people will enjoy it. All right, friends. 
go into this weekend fresh and open and we'll see you soon. Maybe tomorrow morning at nine, right? All right, bye-bye.